Friends, if you're like me, nothing says Sunday morning more than some fresh sausage frying up in a cast iron pan. But when it comes to our favorite brands, the prices have gone up, while the quality, well, it's been heading down. So I've decided to try to make my own sausage and see if I could make a better tasting, fresher sausage and save some money while doing it. And in this video, I'm going to share with you what equipment I purchased and how it all performed. I will also share what ingredients I selected and their related cost. All the steps that were required and the time it all took to make the sausage. And ultimately, was it all worth it? Did I produce a better tasting sausage and also save money? That's what we're all here to find out, right? But before we get started, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and share it with any of your friends that would be interested in this type of content. It's what keeps the channel going. Thank you. So first, we're going to need a meat grinder. And this is the Weston number 8. I bought this November 2023 for right under $80. And I posted a video of this last week where we ground up some hamburger. So please check my playlist for that video and more information on this grinder and other options for meat grinders. Now as far as acquiring the meat, I recommend scanning your local market flyers and seeing what they have on sale each week. Doing this can get you whole Boston butts or fresh hams for well under $2 a pound. And it's not only perfect for breakfast sausages, but it can also make fresh bratwurst and Italian sausages that are perfect for the barbecue. And at less than $2 a pound, you can feed the whole army for like $20. Good stuff, huh? For my breakfast sausage, I chose this beautiful Boston butt and at $1.99 a pound, a little over nine pounds, it cost me $17.89. And once I got it home, I deboned this pork butt and I cut out four really nice pork steaks and put those in the freezer for later. The rest of it, I separated into fat and lean portions and then froze it for uh, making my sausage. Now here is the uh, fat cap and all the fat that I cut out of it. You see how thin I package it? That makes it freeze quick and also allows me to thaw it out quickly. Same thing with the lean section. I try to pat it down into these thin, thin packages like this. Freezes quick and thaws out fairly quick. This has been out of the freezer for and in the refrigerator for know, a few hours now. And this here is the seasoning that my research provided to be the best. Legs Pork Sausage Seasoning Blend Number 10. 8 ounces makes 25 pounds. It was $6.92 on Amazon. That comes out to about $0.39 cent a pound. I also picked up a large container of red pepper flakes for $3.99. Uh, it probably makes about 40 pounds of sausage. That comes out to about $0.09. Cent a pound with the pork butt being about two dollars and twenty cent after deboning plus 39 cent for the seasoning nine cent for the pepper flakes we're at about two dollars and 68 cent per pound so let's figure out how much pork we have so we can figure out our seasoning mix now the cutting board i put on there weighs 14.26 ounces so we'll need to subtract that from the weight of this pork fat and this pork butt. Now the reason I separate the fat from the lean meat is that the fat, if not frozen, will smear on the knife blade when you try to grind it. So instead of getting nice little cuts, it'll smear in there and, and bind up the grinder. So it's best to keep the fat frozen for as long as possible. So that's why I separate the two meats. I also thought that it would be easier if I wanted to adjust the amount of fat per lean down the road. Having it in two bags would make it easier. Alright, so the seasoning does 25 pounds. There's 8 ounces in the bag. So that comes out to 0 
three, two, yeah, 0 0.32 ounces per pound of meat. All right, and we have five and a half pounds of pork. All right, so what's that come out to? One, one point seven six ounces for five point five pounds. That's we need one point seven six ounces of seasoning for the amount of pork we're going to grind because we're going to do both the lean and the fat all together in this trial. All right, so our little bowl here weighs 6.8 ounces. So 6.8 plus 1.76 comes out to 8.61. So we're going to have a total weight of 8.61. All right, so that's how much we need to see on our scale. So we're going to take the seasoning, open this bad boy up. All right, and we're going to pour in the seasoning until we get to 8.61. but that's not going to hurt anything. I don't think a tenth of an ounce is going to hurt anything. So let's go ahead and take this seasoning because we're going to make a bunch more sausage with it down the road. Let's get it in a Ziploc bag. Get in there nice and neat where we can see the label so we know what's in there. And let's work out the air. Pull that over. All right, so that's all sealed up. That's ready for the next batch down the road. All right, so here we are. We got our seasoning. Let's take a look at that. Uh, you know, this has got a little bit of red pepper flake in it already. It didn't say it was hot sausage, but you can definitely see there's a little bit of red pepper flake. Probably some paprika, cayenne. Here, let's taste that. Oh, yeah. Pretty good. Hmm, a little hot. Okay. Ooh. That's what we want. Hmm. <coughs> <coughs> All right, so next up we need us a nice big container to mix it all up. I recommend something with a uh, tight fitting lid like this. This five quart container is just perfect for the job. Now, the knives that you keep seeing are a pair of processing knives that we made ourselves. Check out my playlist and you will find a video series on making these two knives. It's pretty cool. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. And we're going to use these knives to start cutting up our pork butt. So we'll start with the lean section. Uh, cut open the bag here so we can get it out easier. Now this meat, while not completely frozen, it's still very stiff as you can see here. Uh, now this was all cut up in nice pieces before but because it was packed in here tightly and frozen, it's kind of sticking to each other. So we're just going to um, pull it out in chunks and, and slice it again. Uh, you want the, the pieces to be sized where they easily go down inside the throat of the meat grinder. And we'll show you that later. Or like I said, you can check out my previous video uh, on how to use this meat grinder on my playlist. I posted that video last week. Um, gives you a lot more detail on how the grinder works and uh, the internal parts. I go into step-by-step -step unboxing all the individual pieces, how to use it, how to turn it on, how to clean and sanitize it at the end. It's a pretty good video. I, I do recommend that you go back and check out that video. But here today we're making uh, making sausage with it and we're going to learn a, a few extra techniques here. So we're just slicing this in. Small enough pieces to go into the throat of that grinder nice and easy. We're going to try to keep the meat as cold as possible while we process it. Even if we got to put it back in the refrigerator or freezer from time to time to make sure the temperature stays where we want it. Now one thing you could have done, or I could have done when I processed this one, was to divide the meat up 
into pre-weighted uh, portions. So if I just wanted to make a pound of pork at a time, I could have went ahead and portioned it out after I cubed it into one pound bags, froze it, and then I could have fresh one pound of pork anytime I want, or I could have done two pounds, three pounds, however I wanted to do it. This one here, I just decided I wanted to go ahead and, and cook up uh, the whole pork butt I had left over after I cut the steaks I wanted out of it. So uh, I'm going to give away some for friends and stuff. I'm going up Tampa for Thanksgiving, so I'll take my mom some and my friends some and, and give some away. So I'll go ahead and process all of this pork in one shot, but you don't have to. Just remember that. Just think ahead, plan ahead. You can make fresh pork sausage, you know, every week or every two weeks, however you want to do it. And, uh, alrighty, so let's get the rest of this cut up and get it in here. And we'll move on to the fat cap. So here you can see why I like to uh, pack these in very thin layers like this, because it's easy to break up and get out of the bag. This is still really frozen, but um, it's so thin you can just kind of snap it apart but I'm gonna go ahead and take the knife and bust it up a little bit more um, I could just just beat it on the chopping board here and break it back into the original pieces but when it comes to pork fat pork fat is really tough it's tougher than beef fat and stuff and uh, like I said it will smear on between the knife and the grinding plate so having it uh, nice and solid like this and frozen is uh, makes it a lot easier to grind. It's less stress on the grinder and it goes through a lot smoother. And um, it gives you better well-defined fat in your sausage. And that's something that, um, from what I hear, is a, a pride of a sausage maker is the, the fat, how well it's designed in there. You definitely don't want mushy fat in your sausage. So, all right, so let's wrap this up and we'll get ready to start putting our seasoning in here in a minute. Whoops, you didn't see that. All right, so we got all our meat here and our pail. Look at that, it looks pretty, huh? So let's go ahead and add some seasoning here. We'll, we won't put it all in there. We'll just put a little bit in it first, maybe about a third or so, and let's get the lid on it. I'm gonna show you a special technique for getting that seasoning mixed in there just perfect. Now, it did take me quite a bit of practice where I could get the chant and the shake all to coincide together, but I'm getting there. All right, so let's get some more seasoning in here. Another third or so, and we'll uh, mix it up again. All righty. And we'll add a little bit more. Another third. Shake it again. And repeat until we get all the seasoning in there. All right. Give it one more thorough shaking. And look at that. Notice how all the um, the seasonings on the meat, it's not on the edge of the container, it's it's on the meat and everything looks evenly coated. So what a great job that did. But I forgot the red pepper, I should have mixed that in with the seasoning, but we're going to do that now. And we're going to put quite in there because I like it kind of spicy and we're going to mix it again and uh, put it in the freezer for a minute. All right, let's get our equipment ready. We're going to need some tongs to handle the meat, keep our hands clean. And we're going to need a stomper to feed the hopper and a knife. Well, because it's a knife channel, right? Got to have a knife. All right, so let's drag out the grinder here. And as you can see, we have our coarse plate on here. And we're just going to check everything out. All right, tainer ring off, pull out the plate. Make sure our knife is in there in the right position. Yep, sharp side out towards the plate, put it back in there on the square gear, and put our plate back in, and our retainer ring. Like I said, I got a previous video, Grounding Beef, that shows a lot more detail on this Weston number 8, 
and all the internal workings of the meat grinder. Check out that video. So we got it plugged in, our lights on. We go ahead and turn it on. Turn it back off. Snug up that nut. Just like I showed you in that first video. Run it in reverse a minute. And we're just wanting to make sure the knife is completely seated up against that grinding plate. Any gaps in between them and it's going to let the uh, connection tissue get in there and it's not going to cut nice. So let's go ahead and get our little hopper tray. We, you know, set on the top here. If we wanted to, we could have put that in the freezer, but I didn't think the meat's going to be plenty cold. And just get everything lined up while that meat is chilling nicely. All right, here's our meat. Now check this out. It's super firm, but it's not stuck together. Just the way we want it. Nice and cold. We'll just crank it up and start feeding it in there. And, uh, as you can see, it'll start feeding itself. You don't have to cram it in there most of the time. You get the chunks a little too big. And yeah, you're going to have to hit it with a stomper or if you overload the hopper like this you got to reach in there with a stick and, and break them up and push them on in there like I am here. Now by pre-seasoning the meat like we did as it goes through the grinder it's uh, it's helping to evenly distribute it throughout the meat and we're also going to do a second grind on this so by the time we do that second grind that seasoning will be very evenly distributed throughout the meat. Now this is only my second time using this Weston number eight, but I tell you, you know, so far I'm really impressed. For as small as a compact unit as it is, it has plenty of power and it, it cuts right through this uh, semi-frozen pork like, uh, like nothing. I'm really, really happy with my purchase. chopping that fat up pretty good. Here's a little better view of the meat coming out. See how defined the fat is. Weston number eight. Doing a great job here. Really nice looking ground pork. You could use this for chili or a number of things. Also, pay attention to how frosty the uh, knife housing looks from all that cold meat going through it. it uh, it's kind of frosted up like a frosted mug, you know. Alrighty, well, this is about it. Coming to an end here. Now, one trick I did learn is... When you get to end of grinding, you got meat in here that hasn't been ground because there's no meat coming in behind it to push it forward. So at the end, you reach and grab some of the meat that you already ground and stick it back up in the hopper. Turn it back on and run that meat through. And what that's going to do is that's going to go ahead and push the rest of the unground meat through the knife and finish grinding. So any meat that you pull out from inside the head will already be ground and you can utilize all of it. Cool little trick, right? All right, so now let's take off our hopper, take off our retaining ring, and we'll make sure we get all the meat out of it here get it all in the tray pull out our plate using a little chopstick here like i talked about in the first video push the button take off the head all right i got the knife fell out of there look how chilled that is it's frosty and let's go ahead and get our meat back in the five quart container so we can get it back in the refrigerator keep it nice and cool while we get ready for the next step speaking of that 
Here is the plate we used in the first grind, and this is the plate we're going to be using in the second grind. It is what they call a medium coarse plate. And that's what we're going to be installing. All right, so everything's set up for our second grind. Our meat is nice and chilled. Look at it, it's beautiful. It's not stuck together, it's just perfect. And we're going to start loading up that hopper and start feeding it through there. Let's see how this baby does on the second grind. Let's get a little bit more careful how we we pack it because we're not loading solid chunks in here. But, uh, oh yeah, look at that. It's nice and pretty. We know our seasoning is getting blended in here very nicely now. Check that out. Beautiful, huh? Alright, so the next few minutes are just going to be grinding meat. Some people will enjoy that. Other people will get bored. And if you're one of the ones that get bored, just skip ahead a few minutes. But, uh, we're just going to finish up this second grind before we move on. Grinder's doing a great job. All right, and once again, as we finish up this batch, we're going to grab a little bit of meat out of the tray here in a minute and run it through so we can clear out the hopper and make sure everything has been ground to the same consistency. Now we get not only to the favorite part, but the most important part. We need to take a portion of our seasoning and fry it up and taste it because before we go any further we need to know if we got our seasoning right so we'll just cook up a little batch of this and if you look closely you can see the red pepper flakes in there pretty cool huh all right so in case you're wondering this is a Stargazer cast iron pan. It is the, the best cast iron pan I've ever had. And I cook dinner in this thing almost every night, as you can tell. Here's their website here. It's a 10 and a half inch cast iron skillet from Stargazer. Highly recommend. I cook dinner every night in this thing for the last two years. So, you can see that sausage. Frying up nicely. All right. Let's test a little piece of this. Oh yeah. Hmm. 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 That's better than Jimmy Dean. Hmm. Hmm. Oh yeah. Let's see if these two in here, I'm going to gobble these up right now. These are good. Mm-hmm. Thumbs up. 
All right, so one more thing we got to do before we move forward is we need to add a little bit of water to this. I'm going to add about a half a cup for this five pounds of sausage. And then we just really need to mix it good. Get all those proteins doing what they need to do. That's part of the sausage making process. Um, you can use the tongs like this. I forgot my gloves, so if I had gloves on, I'd reach in there and mix it by hand. But anyway, uh, video's getting kind of long here. Um, looks like I'm going to have to do a third part as far as the sausage stuffer and all that. But um, let me say, you know, the, uh, the meat grinder did a fantastic job. The seasoning was spot on. I mean, this stuff is really good. The uh, red pepper flakes added to it. We had about the perfect amount. We were just guessing there. You know, this is the first time I ever made breakfast sausage, and I'm, I'm really happy with the results. So, what were we? We were under, uh, what, about $2.40-some cent a pound? I mean, that's a clear winner. And we could probably get our ingredients even cheaper than that. And here's the sausage stuffer I bought. Um, we're not going to have time to get into that today, so make sure you stay subscribed for my third video where I show us stuffing the sausage casings and making sausage links with this stuffer and doing a review on that. So, um, once again, make sure you subscribe. Please like the video, share it with your friends, and thanks for viewing.